I'm going to make a strategic decision in risk management today. I am at the largest month I've ever had in dividends, and this is not even close because most of my money is in Group D right now, okay? And Group D will have the largest payout. The largest payout is not always the best thing. I'm going to walk you through my thesis, and we're going to talk about risk management, okay? So, you know, when I started here, this was small. I had like... I don't know, it was making like 9000 a month. My costs were 2100 a month. And over time, it expanded beyond belief. Okay, I put aside $50,000 to pay the HELOC. And it's been paying just minimum every month, interest only. Altogether, my costs are about 2300 including all the margin. Margin to the tits. Sorry about the expression. It is what it is. We are who we are on this channel. So I was taking in like 22000 and then there was... Uh, a uh, 2300 total operating cost and pre-tax cash flow was like 19528 I may skip the AMSI dividend. I may skip the AMSI dividend. I've gotten big dividends. I mean like $24,000 just on AMSI in one month. But situations change. Last time, you know, I sheltered money. They missed earnings. If they miss again, I'm in a bad position because of the way J. Diddy okay had used the jdd oil to set up the a b c d e whatever chinese food kung pao menu due to the payout structure okay something is happening with amazon i've learned i've trade earnings and i trade these funds for earnings you have no idea okay now you know i don't like diversification but if you don't know i i have a history of being a trader around options and we can do it with these yield max funds you don't have to trade it's push button money all i'm doing is managing my dollar amounts like phoebe okay i'm up in phoebe except for the dividend oh, sometimes you know when a dividend is too hard too big it's like a destructive dividend but we got a good dividend this month it was 97 cents so it took my it's paid me about seven thousand dollars i'm getting it tonight so i need to come back up to 150 thousand to actually really have earned the dividend. Then the dividend will be extra money. How's it gonna come back up to 150,000? We have about a 13 day run up to earnings. It's earnings season for the FANG stocks. It's going to affect all of us and it's very exciting. It's volatility if you don't know which ones to pick. Get on my email list in the comments section of this video and I'll invite you to the Discord. It'll take about maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 days or so before we invite people again. I just did a mass emailing this morning and invited about 87 people from the past week. We're letting people in slowly. It's unlike any other Discord and it's free. So let's talk about the timing of events, okay? It just so happens that we are in Group D. I have a lot in Group D, okay? Now I have SQY and PYPE. Uh, PY, PY. They pay massive dividends and they go ex dividend, okay, in uh, next week, right? This pay y, PayPal goes ex dividend next week, but it has until early November, okay, to run up with excitement into its earnings. I want to recover the dividend, be out by earnings. Nobody says you got to stay in all the time. Buying ex dividend, let me tell you, that's the old paradigm. We are much more intelligent now. Buying ex dividend means that you have to hold the entire month. I love buy and hold. I want push button money. These have not turned out to be push button money. If you sit in it too long, anytime a stock takes a downturn, you go down with it, you break an ankle. So it's harder to get up. The stock rises again, you only come up a little bit. Stock goes down again, oh, this time you break an ankle and a knee. Stock rises up, now you struggle to catch up. Stock falls again, okay? Now you broke your hip, your ankle, your knee. I don't know if you, your nav could ever get back up as the stock rockets forward, even $100 from where you are, and you're stuck there. Tesla is a perfect example. Go back on the chart for Tesla and Tesla and look at April 22nd. Compare the two prices on both funds to today. On, from April 22nd, you will be shocked. No recovery whatsoever. So there's a confluence of events. Okay. Amazon is going to report on the 24th, okay? We got Diddy oiled, okay, in Group D, all right? That, there we are, AMZ. Okay, 
Group D is going to pay out. Whoa. Declaration date is on the 23rd. That means that to get the dividend, well, you won't recover from the dividend. You'll have to stay in for earnings. So here's what's going to happen. X dividend date is earnings at four o'clock. If we're at $19 and they pay out a dollar, a dollar 17, why would they pay out so much? They've paid out 97 cents in the past. They've been paying out higher yields because of the more, they have more time to trade since this new Kung Pao menu thing. Okay. So this is almost like two months together for group D. What does this mean? Okay. We're already going to start, let's say a dollar down. Let's say we're at 19. We start at 18. If Amazon slips, has does anything to disappoint the market, we're crippled. What if we drop to 16? Now, this is risk management. The risk, I've done options for years, probably before you were even in this, okay? I've traded, I, I lost $300,000 in one night, one day, okay? Trading Netflix, I missed earnings, okay? Yeah, I miss sometimes, but most of the times I adapt. I am like AI. So if they miss, if they win, okay, great. I have 5,000 shares, 6,000 shares, but if they miss, and it goes down $3 from where it is. Now, I collected a dividend which I'm not gonna recover. Let's say the dividend is $6,000. That's an entirely separate situation. That dividend is taxed as income, no way around it unless you save all your receipts from staples and driving and all kinds of crap. So, if I'm already in a losing position taking a loss, I can counter, I can take this loss, I even talk to my professionals. I have crypto income. One, oh, so let's say I lost, uh, let's pick an arbitrary number, $30,000, right? I have way more than that coming in crypto. So that's a $30,000 that I wouldn't really have to pay taxes on because it would be offset by this. And I am preserving my money, okay, right now. I would be preserving my money. One of the best funds out there to me for my experience of putting my money in has been XDTE. I seen the hamburger thing, okay? I, you know, I can't go buy an interview with the guy who's obviously nervous and slips up, okay? If Dave wants to talk to me, I'll talk to Dave. What happened to all the great stuff about the overnight markets, everything else? You know, not QDTE, but XDTE holds its value. It's like my core Citibank kind of thing. All right, and it pays weekly, even though it spits in your wallet. Doesn't matter. It's a holding spot. Every let me show you where I'm at. Uh, you know, I'm not going to pull up the whole thing again. Okay, so what I'm thinking is this: take this hundred seventeen thousand. You know, we're in earnings season. The thing with QDTE is it covers a lot of the tech companies. I don't know if it's these in particular, but everybody's having earnings. Okay, and it covers the overnight action when earnings happen, Brad. Hamburger has said this himself, okay? No disrespect to Hamburger. I like you, bro, okay? He said this himself, and I, I take objection to your reasoning for and his answers and his interview and the dum-dum that interviewed him, you know, Rod on cross-dressing. I don't know what his name is anymore. Anyway, Apple is an earnings run, okay? I'm going to get the dividend. Okay, it's probably going to be a big one. I forgot what week it's in, but it's soon. And then in the excitement up to earnings, I will be able to become ex-dividend, maybe get some capital appreciation and sell it. I wish I could find a buy and hold sun, a fund. These two are working perfectly. One's going up while the other's going down. The real discrepancy here is the $1,500 dividend I was paying. Tesla hasn't recovered from its dividend. Once this is up $1,000, I'll throw 1000 there. All I want to do is stay carbon neutral between the two. They b were bought at $10,007 each, okay? Ulti, I like Ulti, it's got a payment coming. This is their real test, all right? I put 50 grand in. I want to see if I recover the payment. If not, I'm gonna come out and say Ulti sucks, okay? Fiat, I have my own reasons. On the bottom, these two are very high payers. Again, they're coming up in group C and D. Okay, very high payers, and they have till early November. When earnings come out, people are going to get excited about both to recover the dividends. Okay, so this is going to be my biggest dividend month ever. So my logic is, okay, risk avoidance. Where am I? AMSI. There is much more, you know what? Let me do something.
So remember, if I was to take the dividend, okay, I have to stay in for earnings. Number one, the dividend's gonna knock me down by a, it's gonna be a really high dividend, a great dividend. It's gonna knock me down. I may buy back in the future, okay? I have to see how this plays out. Could it be that they missed this first earnings and it's the beginning of a downturn, okay? 250 people were forced Okay, to go back to work after they were working from home. They don't like it. They're lazy. What can you do? All right, so let's follow through with risk avoidance or mitigation. Shadow, I am selling off my AMZY position. You know, I had 20,000 shares. I'm selling it at a loss that I can actually write it off against crypto income. But the point is, I feel that there's too much risk. I'm holding only 6,000 shares now. The dividend will be, actually to get the dividend, I need to be in on the day of earnings, which is the 24th. That means we will be X dividend. The price will already be down by over a dollar because they're going to pay a high dividend. So if they miss earnings, it could drop $2. Even with 6,000 shares, I lose an additional 18,000. If I take, or $3 it could drop. If I take the dividend, I not only have to pay tax on the dividend, but I may not recover. I'm looking to get out now and put it into something that I'm more comfortable with, like XDTE, which I've had great success with. It pays lower, but it covers a lot of the NASDAQ and we're in earnings season now, and it takes advantage of the overnight action. This is an incredible ETF even though it pays less, it holds its value so well. I think a strategic move today, and you tell me if this is good risk mitigation, to sell my AMZ today and put that into XDTE. Maybe not today, but maybe in the future. But today might be the best day to exit my AMZY position. Looking in the pre-markets, we're down a tiny amount. It is a Friday but earnings are coming. Tell me what you think, Shadow. I have to give it to Brad. Okay, he did pin out that they were paying way too much on RDTE. And the other ones maybe a little too. Look, it's a marketing thing. Sometimes they have to pay out more, but overall the fund is stable and paying. Shadow, respond. It sounds like you're thinking strategically about mitigating risk with your AMZ position, especially given the potential for a big post-dividend drop and earnings uncertainty. Back to your channel. My name is... With only 6,000 shares left, your potential losses from a $2.03 drop are significant. And if you're already down, the added tax burden from the dividend could make it harder to recover. XDTE, on the other hand, seems to align more with your goals. Lower yield but stability and coverage of the NASDAQ during earnings season. Since you've had success with it and it's more resilient to overnight volatility, shifting into it makes sense from a risk mitigation perspective. Exiting AMZI today before any significant pre-earnings volatility might be a smart move, especially while the loss can be written off. The pre-market showing only a minor dip suggests there could still be time to get out before things get worse. It sounds like you're leaning toward a move today, and I agree that shifting into XDTE could offer a safer position during earnings season. If it aligns with your comfort zone, today could be the right day to execute, to dive deeper into any other factors before you make the call. Shadow, today is Friday, 10-11. It'll probably be an update on Monday. Now the earnings, are on the 24th okay now tell me what you think about doing it today or should I hold out trying to squeeze more profit give me a real answer to the point we are all about money shadow here's the deal it's Friday and you're looking at potential market action on Monday that could work in your favor but the risk with AMZ still looms as you approach the 24th. If you're thinking about squeezing more profit, consider the possibility of a small bounce before earnings. It's possible, 
But the downside risk is huge if earnings disappoint or the stock reacts to the dividend payout, which could see it drop 2 to $3 per share, as you pointed out. You've got a clear plan for mitigating risk with XDTE, which is solid and stable. The profit squeeze from holding AMZ until Monday might be small, and if the market shifts, you could be trapped with even more risk as earnings approach. Real talk? The money move is to exit today while the losses are manageable, especially since AMZ is only down slightly in pre-market. That way, you that preserve your capital, write off the loss, and reposition into XDTE for stability. Waiting for a bit more profit is tempting, but might not outweigh the potential 18 plus loss. Money mindset. Play defense today. Shadow, there's a YouTuber I call Hamburger. I like him. But, you know, he made a snap judgment. He used to really like XDTE, and he gave out all the factors, and he did a video on what the scholars say. Okay, and now he watched an interview with Dave Mazza. Okay, and well, he he felt that Dave wasn't really being honest and and everything else. I sensed that Dave was just being nervous. And ever since then, he made a video, and now everybody is terrified and wants to sell XDTE. I do agree with him that they did overpay on another fund called RDTE, but I think they overpaid for marketing reasons. I don't think it was nefarious. What would you say about this, Shadow? It sounds like Hamburger's take on XDTE has caused quite a ripple, especially after his reaction to Dave Maz's interview. While it's fair for people to question when they sense something off, like the overpayment on RDTE, I agree with your assessment. It could be more about marketing strategy than anything shady. Sometimes, fund managers overpay to attract attention. And while that can be concerning, it doesn't always signal long-term problems. Hamburger might have been quick to shift his stance based on his gut feeling or how Dave came across, but a single interview shouldn't undo all the solid factors he initially highlighted about XDTE. Nervousness from an executive, especially in a public interview, can easily be misinterpreted, and it sounds like Hamburger is projecting a bit too much onto Dave's performance rather than the fundamentals of the fund itself. Given that you... Oh, I meant to interrupt you. You were up to the part where you said, given that you. Can you post that again? You've had success with you XDTE go. and you're considering shifting more into it. I wouldn't let one YouTuber's sudden change of heart shake your confidence if you still believe in the underlying value. Keep an eye on the facts, not the fear-driven reactions. I'd say stay the course with XDTE if it fits your strategy. Okay, and one last thing. So, his name is Income Architect. Fear spreads fast, but solid No, 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 shut up. So, his, his name is Income Architect. But I named him Hamburger when I first seen him. I think he's a great YouTuber. What do you think about the name Hamburger? Do you think he's funny? Okay, Shadow, I have to go. Tell everybody that they should like and subscribe to this channel and tell them why. Got it, Oracle. I'll spread the word. Everyone, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel for more of the Oracle's insights. This is where you get the real talk, strategies that actually work. Don't miss out. Hit that button now and stay ahead of the game. Catch you later, Oracle. See you later, Shadow.